<coughs> Excuse me. When a hero comes along. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Me, 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 me. Baby, can you stop the rain from falling? I can't wait another day. Baby, can you stop? Stop the rain. Oh, oh, oh. Baby, can you stop? Can you stop the rain? Oh, I've been playing this game six hours and thirty-two minutes. God damn! Come on, y'all, foul in, little minions. Put some hot sauce on my burrito, baby. What up, Nubian Peach? Shit, that's crazy. So apparently, LeBron reached out to Kevin Durant about joining forces on the Lakers. Kevin Durant declined and then showed him the text messages to his teammates. The NBA is loving hip hop and I love it. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna give a couple more minutes or seconds maybe of me singing and then we're gonna get started. Cause I got to tell y'all the rules. Boom, boom, boom. If y'all didn't uh check it out last time, I was fighting this uh, crazy demon chick in like a club and the level was bananas and it, it was a whole lot of shit but I was stressed out by the end of it then I turned around and went and saw Jurassic World and that stressed me the fuck out too anybody inside of the discord uh, group knows I went through it those past two days it's like Tuesday and yeah that was all Tuesday god damn All right, so welcome to the Negro Just Sleep Twitch of Devil May Cry. I forgot for a second what it was I was playing, even though it's right in front of me. I'm your host, J2, and tonight I will be telling you all a story that is very near and dear to me, but I want to give people time to file in. So I will start the, I say I started at the 15 minute mark. 15 minute mark and I give you all the story and yes it does involve slavery and yes it does involve Harriet Tubman don't be a bully Nubian Peach share the will oh yeah I think this is about to be a boss battle I need to focus 
Yes! This is exactly the opportunity I've been waiting for! Come on, baby, let's make Daddy proud! Oh. Man, I think it's like this. It is playtime. I hope she don't attack me with her vagina or something. That would be wild. You know, I've been looking she gotta pull their hair back. to unwind. Oh, shit. She didn't pull it back. She took it off. Oh! Now there is a face only a mother could love. Okay. It's two hell bars. Nope, not yet. I was waiting for y'all. Yeah, I said it was going to begin at the 15 minute mark. By that time, I plan to be done with this whatever it is. I'll do anything for his mother, Dante. Oh, that's right. Whoa. You wouldn't know that. Oh. oh! 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 Nice try. They don't stand Oh! Nope! Ah. Okay. I can't bring myself to you. Okay. 
Oh shit! Ow! God damn! That's oh, my boy! What kind of freak show is this? Do I dive with you? Okay, that's how. Oh. oh! I don't know what I did just then, but that's too heavy. Yeah, man, the baby came out of the woman. And, well, this is, uh, Mundus' whore. And then he stuck the, the baby stuck the back in. And, and that's what I'm fighting. I'm fighting Mundus' baby. And it sounds, it don't sound that bad. In my head this when I was sick. about to explain it. It is sick, okay. Oh, shit. Nope. Yeah, real time. Try all you like. You can't kill him. He's born with just like his father. Oh. 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 Yeah, damn it. That shit hurt. That shit hurt his ass. Lila, you are a disgrace. Totally facing the wrong way. What the hell? I don't came too far to die. So you think Mundus would want a hag like you by his side once he has his son? Killing you will make him one. Respect me, appreciate me. Don't understand him, cat. Oh, damn, almost there. The freak show's gotta end, Lilith. Oh, why? Baby's having so much fun. Got it, baby. Get you your ass out of there, baby. 
and take this egg. Beat her ass, Dante. Beat her ass. Finish it. The song was going in. Hey, you, what the fuck is Get wrong out. with you? I'm not gonna kill you or Mundus' spawn. I'll let you both live if you do exactly as I say. Hell no. I swear, I'm nothing without this brat. Now pull yourself together. I didn't even know what the song was. Until the very end. Really? Thanks for getting in touch, Mundus. Sorry it took me so long to get back. Regarding your trade offer, I'd like to suggest a counter proposal. The life of the girl. For the life of your child. Whoop that trick! Get it! Whoop that trick! Yeah. So you might. Coco is amazing. I loved it, but I did not expect the the uh, the big uh, twist to it. Thought I was no, nah, I'm not gonna say that. But everybody should watch that movie. Okay, I promise y'all that I'll get started getting ready to tell the difference. 15 minutes. Tears in the day. <laughs> yeah, dog. It will make you cry. It will make you cry. Like, I didn't cry, but, and that was only because my wife was sitting next to me and my daughter was in there and I had to hold up, but it's just one part and I was like, Ugh. it almost got me, dog. Almost had me out here now. Ain't no step. I don't need that shit. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Do want these those trillion stairs? Can't cry in front of the wife and kids, man. Yeah, the kids like my daughter didn't get the implications of what was happening, and I was like, "This is just shit deeper than rap, man." Pixar know who they real audience is. It's us. We grew up with them. All right, so. Circa 2010, I was working as a customer service representative at Blockbuster. And yeah, I freely tell you all, I worked at Blockbuster because shit, it's dead. <laughs> uh, Blockbuster got caught slipping by Netflix, RIP and Blockbuster, and RIP and Toys R Us. It was that, that picture of Jeffrey the Giraffe is so sad. With him just standing in the empty store and like he he retired and got his retirement clothes on, but it was very good. Anyway, so um, I was there, and at night, like I worked on Saturday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Friday night, Saturday night to close at midnight. So of course you get bored up in there. One time, um, I, I, well, what I used to do and people enjoy working with me was I would just tell stories. I would tell you the stories from um, my childhood or stories just like I'm doing now. Um, but I would also make up stories, make up my own narratives. So jump to 2012, Django Unchained drops. Jamie Foxx is in it doing this thing. This trailer comes out. It's spectacular, but at the end of the trailer, after I had, you know, calmed my, my hype level down for it, I looked, and I was like, damn. I kind of already made this story in jest. I was just joking. Bullshit. 
Um, we had a couple hours of store, usually got slow around 10.30 on Saturdays. I should have told my homeboy, Carlos, shout out to Carlos. He was uh, my manager as well. He was there when I told him this story. I made it up on the fly. And around the time this came out, a movie, Ninja Assassin, came out like 2009. Great martial arts movie. It came out, it's, it's kind of like for ninjas what 300 was for Spartans. And I just was like, man, you know what would be wild if during slavery they just had this this one Negro who could do Kung Fu and he would just, you know, fight the slave masters and rise up. And the more I thought about it, the more absurd it got and did I just did the full story. And so, like I said, when I saw Django Unchained, I was like, damn, man, I had me something and I just didn't have the means to get it out there. But I'm going to tell you all the story tonight. NJL Theater Presents in association with the NJL video game Twitch channel. A story by J2 starring Clint Eastwood, Chris Tucker, Michael J. White, Tony Ja, Jet Li, Sanaa Lathan, Lupita Nagoyo, uh, who else? And, and Nupito wasn't in this at the time when I made it, but I just replaced her. Neil Long is in here somewhere. Uh, I remember Chris Rock kind of being the um, slave, the house nigga, that, uh, uh, what's his name? Samuel Jackson was. He was basically stepping in this story. Liam Neeson makes a a cameo at one point. Michael Fassbender. I think I had Patrick Stewart in there. And a couple more people. With that being said, this all-star cast in tow and in mind, I present to you nigga assassin. So, choose any year any year during slavery when Greenville, Mississippi off in the hottest plantation on earth at Manor Longstroke. Manor Longstroke is run by the slave master and plantation owner Colonel Longstroke who served in the war. <clears throat> And so, which war it is, can't tell y'all it. Just pay attention to the story. It's not meant to be historically accurate. Colonel Longstroke is played by... No, it wasn't Colonel Longstroke. It was Colonel uh, Flake. Colonel Flake is played by Clint Eastwood. And the reason I chose Clint Eastwood, at first it was Liam Neeson, but it's Clint Eastwood now because Clint Eastwood just got that look of racism. He's had that look of racism since Gran Torino. And I'm debating on if I should play the game while telling this story, or if I should just go ahead and tell the story. So I give y'all a couple minutes to figure out what y'all want me to do. All right, so Colonel Flake has this big, beautiful plantation. And he has the most slaves. And the thing that is special about or it's so crazy about Colonel Flake's plantation is no slave has ever gotten off the plantation alive. Why is this? Because Colonel Flake had the foresight to go overseas with all his riches and go to China and Japan. And in Japan, he met a group of ninjas or ninja masters. And he watched them as they carried on. <laughs> and he, he watched them as they, you know, did different performances. And he saw a ninja tournament. And when he saw this tournament, he looked to his right hand. 
Michael Tennessee played by Michael Fassbender and he said Tennessee I gotta get me one of them and so he had plenty of money he offered so many riches and so much money well really he had gold gold was his biggest fortune he offered gold to the ninja masters and they was like all right we'll give you some of our soldiers and no i'm not going to do a japanese uh accent because it's real racist i'm not doing it so he gets a couple ninjas one of the ninjas actually is Jet Li, but when you first start the story, you see we get a young Jet Li. All right, so time goes on. Of course, you see the hardships and stuff that slaves have to go through. But whenever a slave tried to run, the ninjas would go and get him and just go ahead and kill him. We wouldn't bring him back. He had the most slaves, not like he would miss one. It would double the workload. It would be some messed up stuff going on. And so, Colonel Flake. Of course, he bedded some of the slaves. And there was one slave by the name of Millie, played by none other than Cicely Tyson. See, as the story goes on, I'm gonna start remembering actors who I had in this. Anyway, Cicely Tyson and Colonel, uh, Colonel Flake had a thing at one point in time and she gave birth to a son who she named Nathan. Colonel Flake knew that this was his son but refused to take him into the house because he was just that fucking racist. And instead of calling him Nathan, he called him nigga. And he always referred to him as nigga and tore him down. Any chance he got he made Nathan go through some bullshit. So one day, Nathan was had to go to the kitchen to get something, and he bumped into Sho. And Sho is Jet Li, now an adult. And when he he and Sho formed something of a bond through the years. And so one day he came to see Sho in the kitchen and Sho said, I think it's time to show you something that's very, very special to me. And he showed, he went into Sho's room and Sho showed him the blade of Sesamo. I did the best I could. Can't remember the name of the sword, but just know that it's a katana. All right, so the blade of Sesamo is the finest blade crafted by the finest swordsmith in Japan. It was passed down for generations in shows, um, in shows life or whatever through generations of his family, and it was given to him. He said, "You are my brother, and this sword is also my brother." I've killed many men with this, but never a slave, because I will only give an honorable kill with an honorable sword. And then Nathan asked him, would you please show me how to use the sword? And Sho decided, okay, cool, I will. But first, you must learn the other art. So over the years, he starts to teach Nathan how to be a great warrior. Nathan eventually becomes a badass, but he had to hide all of these talents from Colonel Flake. So you quick cut and do a, like a rocket montage showing him training and showing all the bullshit that slaves had to go through. He trained in secret. And so one day, uh, and, oh, he quick cuts and then all of a sudden Nathan is grown. And Nathan, grown Nathan is played by who? None other than Michael J. White. This casting is flawless. Y'all can't fuck with me. Michael J. White is grown Nathan. So, they're out on the field. Michael J. White sees his 
best friend who's played by Chris Tucker, his name is, uh, I don't know, Carl. Yeah, his name would be Carl. And Carl, of course, is the comic relief. He always doing goofy shit. So one day, Carl gets in trouble because he was uh, goofing around. He tripped and he ruined Colonel Flake's supper. And Colonel Flake said, nigga, you and nigga are going to pay for this. And Nathan was like, what did I do? And Colonel Flake was like, you were just here with your black ass. And so he drug him outside. And then he decided to have uh, his right hand. I thought, I think I named him something else, Tennessee, but now his name is going to be Cash. Cash Money, Tennessee. That's the name of Michael Fassbender's character. So Cash comes out there and he says, Cash, whoop this nigga into submission and whoop his nigga friend too. And Cash was like, well, yeah, you call one nigga all the time, so I don't know who you want me to, to start with, but I'm just going to beat the shit out of both of them. And as soon as he rears back and he hits Carl and Carl is crying and then he gets ready to rear back and hit um, Nathan and Nathan thinking about all the shit he's been through through the years catches the whip in his hand all the white people go crazy that's witnessing this and all the black people are looking at it like oh shit Nathan gonna die today because you don't do that shit and so Nathan pulled cash to him and kicked him straight in the nuts with the stiffest straight kick you've ever seen in cinematic history. I'm talking about this shit was going to be colder than Bruce Lee. This shit was going to be colder than anything Bruce Leroy y'all ever did. And when he kicked him in the nuts, like, it was going to make a crunch sound. Like, I always had that scene in my mind. It's going to make a real crunch sound to the point where Cash's left leg is just going to flat out go limp. So Cash can't get up, he crying and shit. This nigga splitting up blood. He got nose, I mean, he got a nose bleeding and all this. And then the other slavers try to jump on uh, Nathan, and Nathan just start beating all their ass, man. He started using their guns, and the black people is pandemonium on the uh, plantation. They don't know what to do because they never risen up. And so Nathan turns to Carl and say, Carl, Get your black ass up and let's go. Massa gonna kill us all. And so they get up and they take off. And then Nathan, in the chaos, while getting shot at, he sees his mom across the way. And he wants to reach out and save her. And his mom tells him, go. Well, she mouths out, go. She doesn't want the slavers to know that she sees her son. And they know that that's his mom or whatever so they grab Cicely Tyson and they and they take her away and so he runs and he finds show and show tells him look I got a tunnel in the back I know there's a, a tunnel um in the back of the plantation like close to the back of the plantation if you get there and you just follow the red arrows you'll get to where you need to be and when you see someone anyone tell them that show sent you and freedom is always up and they said what and he said motherfucker get out of here but before you go nathan i give you my sword the sword of shimmero and yes i did just change the name the sword of shimmero like you were my brother this is my brother but now it is your brother you take it and only kill with honor. And so Nathan starts crying, but he hugs Sho because he knows it's probably the last time he's going to see him. And Sho, I mean, not Sho, Nathan and Carl take off running, and Sho walks out of his quarters. And he bumps right into Colonel Flake. And Colonel Flake said, I always knew you were going to turn on me, and I always knew that you loved them, them niggas. And you know what? I let you do the shit that you do behind my back because I enjoyed all that 
monkey flipping this shit that you always did. I thought it was entertaining. And I thought that Chinese firecrackers and shit was all good. And then Sho looks at him and says, I'm Japanese, you fucking bitch. And he looks at Sho and he says, fucking bitch, huh? Well, I knew I was going to have to replace you, so I did. And who, does it, who comes out? Chaos. Chaos is played by Tony Ja. If y'all don't know who Tony Ja is, get on your computer and type in T-O-N-Y-J-A-A, -A, I think. He played in on Bach, all three of those, and he played in the protector. He was cold as a motherfucker. And I had a great fighting scene in mind when I casted him in this epic. And so, Chaos comes out. Chaos and Show had this epic ass battle, man. I mean, nunchucks and all kinds of shit come out, bro. And then, at one point, somebody picks up a battle axe. And Show just ain't going for that shit. And man, Colonel Flake is going to shoot Show in the back of his fucking knee as he's getting the one up on Chaos. And Chaos is going to cut his fucking head off. And so that's how, I think, what, how many acts have I taken y'all to? That's how Act 1 ends. No, Act 1 ends when Nathan and Carl have been running for about two days throughout this tunnel. They follow the red arrows and they run into this uh this dude who's played by Bo King Woodbine. And of course Bo King Woodbine gonna be in here because he in all the black movies, man. That's how you make your shit classy. You cast Bo King Woodbine, you always gonna have some good shit. So Bo King Woodbine is is uh the dude that he bump into and then he tells him. Don't worry about how many eggs there are. Just stay with me. He tells him, or he asks him, which way is freedom? And Nathan was like, fuck, I think I forgot. And then Carl was like, man, I know you ain't forget, man. Come on, man. He gonna kill us if you don't remember, man. And then Nathan was like, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to remember. And then he says, oh, freedom is always up. And Bo King was like, dead. And so both of them got together and they started walking and Bo King was like, Bo King Woodbine's character. I forgot, did I even name him? Uh, no, nah, I didn't name him yet. Bo King Woodbine's uh, character name is, um, is, is uh, I think it was Obi. Yeah, it was Obi. Bo King Woodbine's character name was Obi. And Obi said that he came from a plantation that was in uh, Alabama, in that area. And he was like, look, man, we, uh, I, I got, I was going through some shit and, you know, we was getting whooped and all of that and it wasn't cool, man. And then I just looked in the sky and I was like, God, if I'm meant to get out of here, please save me and my family. Because Obi knew that the stuff that the slavers were saying about God was true. And so he said he looked up one day. And somebody was telling him, look, there's something going on. Slaves are being freed. We got to get in on this. And as he's telling this story, he's going to come to this past and it's going to be a creek. And it was like a beautiful waterfall or some shit like that. And when you walk through, it's going to be this lady. And she's going to be really pretty. And this lady is played by... Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. The lady is playing. I, I think this is the time Law Abiding and Citizen came out. I can't remember, but for whatever reason, Viola Davis is in this movie too. This lady is played by Viola Davis. You know, when Viola Davis, like when they got her with their real good cocoa butter and shit, she be looking real good. And you want to know how? I, I I can give you an example of how good she be looking, man. Besides, like how to get away murder shit, she look really pretty in fences, man. Y'all sleeping on Viola Davis. Anyway, but Ola Davis comes and she was like, look, y'all trying to get the freedom? And then Nathan was like, yes, ma'am. She's like, you don't have to call me ma'am. We're all the same here. He said, well, what is your name? And then Ola Davis says, uh, says, 
My name is Harriet. Harriet Tubman. And I developed this system to get all of us to the north where we can be free. And I got people in the north who keep ledgers of everything and every slave. And so, oh, that's the other thing I forgot to tell you. Nathan doesn't know his name. Nathan thinks his name is nigga. All right. So when he asked her what, when, when she asked him what his name is, he says nigga. And then she's like, no, son, what is your real name? He was like, my name is nigga. And then Chris Tucker's character, uh, Carl, is like, yeah, man, this is his name. You know, he never had no real name. I guess we'll call him Ian. And then, uh, and then Harriet is like, Ian, no, we're going to call him Frederick. And then he was like, Frederick? And she said, yes, your name is going to be Frederick. Until we get to the north and find out what your real name is, your name is Frederick. So he was like, okay. And then they go to the north, and as they're going, he sees another beautiful woman. And her name is Rose. He, you know, they mind each other and all this kind of stuff as they're going up to the north. And Rose is played by none other than Sanaya Lathan. So, Sanaya Lathan character and uh, Rose and, and uh, Frederick, formerly known as Nathan, but only knows himself as nigger, get together and they develop a relationship. And Rose can read. So, Rose teaches uh, Nathan how to read and Carl. And um, they get to this metropolis or whatever. Well, not metropolis, but they get to this this big ass house in the north. It's in New York, and up there, uh, they got like a whole bunch of free slaves or whatever. And so they meet this other white man, and this is where Liam Neeson comes in. And I had to recast him as a good white man because I just can't see Liam Neeson being just a racist savage like I can see Clint Eastwood being a racist savage. So Liam Neeson, a character named Dr. Dubow, he was there and he was just explaining, you know, why he wanted to free slaves and stuff like that and that the South is a bunch of fucking losers and they just made it. And so... They get up there and they learn how to read and they find this ledger and they got this ledger from slaves who went on the Underground Railroad who actually learned the real names of all the slaves um, on the plantation. And the reason they learned all their real names and stuff to keep up with it, the reason they learned all their names to keep up with it is because they know the slaves in the South couldn't read. So they wanted them to know what their true names, their true given names were by um, their parents instead of you know anything derogatory or any lies that might have been told and they had some of the names that were you know the names of the slaves from Africa but they did the best they could because you know history a lot of people's African history was wiped out when they were brought over and so um, it was a big deal learning what your real name was because they wanted you to be able to read your real name all right, so uh, there's this touching scene. I remember, uh, and one more thing about um, Nathan's mom. The thing is, mom, he threatened Colonel Flake, threatened uh, her to never let him know what his real name was because he wanted to take that, that sense of power away from him. He was like, if he if I ever find out he knows his real name, I have him killed in front of you and I'll make you live with it for the rest of your life. All right? Now, I know I'm building Colonel Flake up to be this villainous motherfucker and that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to feel something a little bit, even though it's a little bit of comedy sprinkled in. So there was this touching scene that I came up with in the library in the north on Dr. DuBose uh, property on his estate. It was gonna be uh, like a day where, um, what's the girl's name, Rose. Rose is gonna take Nathan and she's gonna take him in there and she was like, okay, I'm glad you, I mean, you know how to read now, so are you ready to see your real name? And then I was gonna have this scene where Nathan is going through the process of pronouncing his name and then when he finally gets it out and she tells him, yeah, that's your name, you're correcting what you're saying, Nathan 
starts to cry. And I was gonna have Rose to, you know, start to cry with him and hug him and kiss him. Then they was gonna have sex in the library because it was gonna be, I mean, it was gonna be a really intense sex scene too. Like, it was gonna be tastefully done. There's gonna be a lot of, I mean, he's gonna hear a couple of slaps here and there, you know, it's gonna be some good shit. So, um, yeah, they're gonna fuck right in the library. That was my, my big get. And he was candles in the library. So yeah, there was another thing. It was at night, so they had the candles going on in the library and wasn't nobody up in there. All right. And so somebody else is gonna uh, escape from the plant from the flake pr- plantation. And Nathan is gonna recognize him. And this person is played by uh uh what's that dude? What's the kid from Everybody Hates Chris? It was played by him, the guy who played Chris. All right, and he always looked like that scrawny escape slave. I'm sorry, this is what it is. Tyler James Williams, I think that's his name. Tyler James Williams is gonna make it up there, and Nathan, you know, looking all stout, can speak good English and all. I mean, well, not uh, proper English. Yeah, he could speak that and all that. And he's like, you know, what's going on? And he asks about his mom, and he tells him, nigga. And then Nathan stops and he's like, no, my name is Nathan. Nathan Frederick Douglas. And so Nathan Frederick, and when he tells him Nathan Frederick Douglas, uh, the dude played by Tyler James Williams, I'm gonna call him uh, Skip. Skip looks at him and says, nigga, what? He's like, don't call me that. My name is Nathan Frederick Douglas. What happened to my mother? He was like, okay, Nathan Fisher Douglas. Well, he uh, tightened your mother's workload up a whole lot to the point where she's hurt of, like she's really doing bad and hurting and stuff. And he wants to make her an example for anybody that is even close or family to a slave that escapes. And he's really pissed off because a slave escaped and people are laughing at him in the South. And he was like other slaves started trying to escape and they were being killed and so now nathan frederick douglas is really sad about all of this he feels like it's his fault and then i had another scene set up in like this courtyard where he's just depressed about it and he's crying and stuff and then rose lays her hand on his shoulder and she said if you want to free them you're gonna have to do it yourself because if they keep trying and they keep dying, it's gonna make you feel worse. But it's not your fault. But if you don't act right now, and you feel convicted or feel like you should act, that is your fault. And Nathan was like, baby, you right. And so he goes to Dr. B- uh, Dubo. I think I said his name was Dubo. Damn, I forgot. He goes to Dr. Dubo and he's like, look, how many soldiers do you have here? And also, Dr. Dubo has been, like, helping to train, he, like, people from the war and stuff. Uh, he's been helping them to, to, like, train with guns and stuff. And he was like, I have plenty of them, son. And so, if you feel like you can march down there and you can free your people, then I'll let, them, then I'll let y'all go. And this is when the casting kind of got wild. Because Forrest Whitaker is one of the soldiers in this army Uh, I think this is where Samuel J. Samuel Jason's like was real cool with Nathan or whatever his character I had wrote a bunch of characters and I just did casting from everybody Uh, I think I had uh, ah what's the dude name the dude who played um, Carl Winslow I think he was in there or whatever man I just had some random people and I didn't want all of them to look like they had been in a Tyler Perry movie or nothing like that. But nah, man, I, I wanted some regular black dude. So they all ride out and go uh, down south. They go back through the railroad to get down south or whatever. And right when they come in, they're like, okay, we're going to sneak in. We're going to attack the plantation from the inside out. So they snuck in. The guy they got in through the railroad or whatever because they still you know don't know where it is 
and then it's this big function going on in the middle of the plantation and it's got all the black people there and all the slaves are there and he was like it's been such and such years since that one nigga or them two niggas got off of my plantation and then another nigga is gonna escape this is all your fault and he's talking to Nathan's mom he has two dogs out there two Rottweilers that he's gonna sick on them and sick on her and they're gonna kill her in front of everybody and when that dog get when the dogs get up to jump on her Nathan literally is gonna throw the sword from like a hundred yards out in the air and the sword is gonna land through both of the Rottweilers right before they jump on her it was gonna be a badass fucking scene alright okay a hundred yards and so when he does that Colonel Flay said who threw that goddamn sword? And then he says, show, show is that you? That's impossible. I killed your ass a long time ago, but I kill you again. And then uh, you look across the um, you look across the field, and you see get this badass shot of Nathan walking slowly or whatever, and then all the other slaves or free slaves freedmen are behind him so they all start rushing him and then this, this, this big fight breaks out and then Nathan does like this Zulu call because oh that's another thing it was this uh, it was gonna be this this cold ass uh, Jaiman Hun Su was gonna play this cold ass uh, warrior <laughs> He was gonna play this cold ass warrior who um, who freed his damn self from slavery when they first brought him over here, and like he still knew how to throw spears and like you know he he knew how to hunt lions and all kinds of shit like that. Anyway, he was gonna be with him, and he was gonna be doing like all kinds of dope shit. I was gonna like use some of the African martial arts and let him have all of those moments and stuff. So he just go. He gonna kill. He had. I think he had like the highest body count besides Nathan. He's gonna kill like thirty people, man. He's gonna be graphic as hell. And I mean, and he didn't have like blades to cut them with. He had this bow stab, and when he hit people with the bow stab, you heard the crack. Like he was that strong. He was snapping necks and snapping jaws anytime he hit somebody. Break is one scene where he breaks somebody's leg just by swinging the stab. And so they start. Uh, it's all chaos or whatever, and then. That character, Jaime Hansu's character was going to do like this African call. And then when he does the African call, four, uh, four of the uh, sl free slaves are going to come in on horses with torches. They're going to burn the whole fucking cotton field. And that's a big fucking deal because it was cotton every fucking way on this plantation. And not only that, you're going to get a close-up shot to see the people that's on the horse. And these are Colonel Flake's horses, right? You're going to see a shot where they got bags full of gold on the horses. So they done robbed this motherfucker too, man, because it's only right. And so this scene right here, getting to, and yes, we are in Act 3. This scene right here was inspired by the final fight between Simba and Scar on Lion King. All right? Journey with me on this one. So the fire is going up. And then Chaos takes uh, Colonel Flake. And he was like, come on, we got to get out of here. So they start running. They get on a horse. And then one of the people who done set uh, the field on fire gets killed by uh, Chaos. And then another one is going to come. And he's going to jump off of his horse in one move. He's going to jump off of his horse. And in the same move, Nathan is going to jump onto the horse. And he's going to turn around and go after uh, Colonel Flake and Chaos in the burning field. And then they're, they're running and the horse catches up with him. And uh, Nathan jumps off of his horse and does a draw kick to both of them and knocks them off of the other horse. So they in the middle of the field or whatever. Fire is blazing everywhere. And then Colonel Flake is like, ho, oh, ho, ho, nigga. I miss you so much. I've been thinking of all kinds of ways to kill you. 
and I still hadn't picked the one that's my favorite yet. But when chaos beats your ass, I'm gonna make sure I snip your nuts and I feed them to the rest of your family. And Nathan Frederick Douglass looks at both of them and he says, do your worst, you cracker. And it's the first time in Negro history the word cracker is uttered. And chaos has a whip that has like some uh, blades on the end of it that spin. And he takes that whip out and he starts trying to fight uh, Nathan with it and they go back and forth. And then Nathan actually gets cut on the leg or whatever, so he's kind of hobbled, but he's still able to take him on. And he's going to swing the whip at Nathan one time and Nathan's going to catch it with his sword. He's going to kind of wrangle the sword into him. And he's going to put the sword around. All right, I'm going to try my best to explain this move. He's going to put the sword around the neck of uh, of what's it, uh, chaos. And then he's going to bring it the chain back or the whip back and starts to kind of choke chaos over his back. But as he's choking him, the sword is going to slowly start to go into Chaos's throat. And then he's going to yank the sword and it's going to cut Chaos's head off. And that's how he kills him. And then Colonel Flake is going to shoot him or, or shoot at him. And in a move that comes out of fucking nowhere, <clears throat> this nigga Nathan is going to turn around and cut the fucking bullet in half. And it's going to fuck Colonel Flake all the way up. And he was like, what kind of nigga shit is that? And he said it's not nigga shit. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, um, Show taught me this. And there were many other things that he taught me, but you couldn't see that because you crackers don't do anything but seek out to destroy and use my people and other people. And you won't use anybody else. And so, Colonel... Um, so Colonel Flake says, what are you going to do, nigga? Just kill me? It don't matter. Y'all will get y'all's one day. You'll never make it out of the South alive. And then he says, no, I'm not going to kill you. We got something else playing better than that. He said, we, nigga, you blind? He said, no, are you? And Colonel Flake starts to look around and the fire has died down. And it's a whole bunch of slaves and free men standing around them. And about 20 of them, no, they had, a, I, I say there were roughly about 50 to 75 slavers on the plantation. And a lot of them had whips. And so, of course, they're dead. So the slaves all got the whip. And they all get around in a circle. No, they all get in a line. And two people whole uh, Colonel Flake down. He's like, no, 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 no. What are you doing? And everybody gets to take turn whipping his ass for a solid five minutes. Like it was going to be uncut and they were just going to beat the shit out of him. And then he finally dies. And then <clears throat> uh, his mother comes up to him and she was like, oh, my boy, Nathan. I missed you so much. No, she said, oh, my boy. Uh, and then right when she get ready to say nigga, he says, no, mom, it's not my name. And she said, well, what is your name, son? And he says, looking into her eyes, as the camera starts to pan in on his face, he says, my name is Nathan, and I am free. And the credits roll. That is nigga assassin. I hope y'all enjoyed. Anyway, damn, that's my time. This shit really did take an hour. I appreciate y'all checking it out. I appreciate y'all listening to me tonight. I know I'm goofy. I know I'm full of shit a lot of the time. But that was one story that I thought about and I was like, yeah, I'll share that with the league. I created Django Unchained way before Django Unchained came out. <clears throat> yeah, I know it's heavy. Way before Django Unchained came out, 
probably less funny, but it was my idea. Quinn Tarantino, I got an invoice coming to you. It's all me. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. It's cool. Uh, oh, what was I about to say? Tomorrow, I think is a strain tomorrow. I'm not sure. I need to check the schedule. I'm really bad about that. But, of course, check us out. If you haven't already, a lot of y'all are listeners, but for those that aren't, check us out on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Google Play, and a lot of other places where podcasts are available. You can follow us on Twitter at Black Nerd Cast, on Facebook, where uh, Negro Justice League, and... I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So, I'm your host. Yes, I'm going over your Quentin Tarantino. I'm your host, J2. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all checking me out and listening to my foolishness. I need to hop in the shower. I need to get some rest. I holler at y'all. Thanks. Much love. Peace.